Welcome to this podcast titled uh, Density. Uh, from this picture, you can see this uh, exquisitely beautiful uh, picture of an uh, iceberg. Um, the curious thing about icebergs and ice in general is that in their solid form, they float. Uh, generally speaking, when uh, things get colder and become solid, they become um, more dense than their liquid form, and so they, they sink. Uh, obviously, this has huge uh, consequences on uh, life on Earth, uh, but the question of why does water in its uh, solid form, that is ice, float, uh, is, a, is a huge uh, puzzle. It has to do with the way that the um, water molecules compact to each other, uh, so density is uh, often considered uh, a measure of its compactness. The title of this podcast is called Density. You can write the main ideas and the topics in the left column, the Q column, uh, your more extensive details um, in the note-taking area, and then when you're done, uh, your summary should just be, uh, from your own point of view, uh, what are the main ideas and what are the takeaways. Um, if you have any questions, uh, the summary would also be a good place to put that as well. Macroscopic refers to the um, properties or observations that can be made without um, any tools, for example, the unaided eye. So, for example, no microscopes. Uh, physical properties are the characteristics of a substance that does not involve a chemical change. Uh, density, color, and hardness are examples. Um, density is the relationship of mass to volume. Uh, mass has to do with the amount of matter that's uh, contained in something. The volume is the amount of space that it takes up. Um, extensive versus intensive properties are different sort of lenses through which to view uh, matter, for example, elements on the periodic table. An extensive property depends on the amount of material being tested. So mass, you can increase the mass of a chunk of something, for example, lead. Um, you can make a, a smaller lead block. Um, and so those are different values. Uh, volume can be changed along kind of a, a continuum or a spectrum. Um, intensive properties are basically unchangeable. So they're unique or inherent to the to the substance. So density is the same in a large block of lead as it is in a small block of lead. So it has to do with the way that the atoms are arranged. So the microscopic, in this case, affects the macroscopic, which would be like density. And then buoyancy is um, whether or not something will float, and it's the result of fluid pressure, um, and it's the um, product of displacing of water. So if you can push aside more water, by volume than what's in your in your body, then you will float. So physical properties um, they include density, they can include other things, but density in this case is the relationship of mass to volume. Uh, you can see in this uh, screenshot from FET Colorado, there is uh, a mass of 2.15 kilograms in wood to its volume of 5.36 liters, and then doing that uh, that division that produces the density of 0.4 kilograms per liter. We can see um, in styrofoam a similar calculation mass to volume gives us a 0.15 kilograms per liter value. This is a pretty cool website called fet.colorado.edu and it's a simulator to investigate the properties of density. As you can see on the, the screen here we have a block of wood and you can see that the wood is um, measured in terms of mass at uh, two kilograms and then its volume is set at five liters. And you'll see that there's different materials um, that we can choose from, styrofoam, wood, ice, etc. So if we were to change up this material, you'll see that styrofoam set at five liters, it weighs less, which I think makes sense. And it's the relationship between mass and volume that gives us this different density of 0.15 kilograms per liter. We can even go to something a little bit heavier uh, in the form of brick, and you'll see that the uh, density is far greater at two kilograms per liter because it weighs more. Again, it has the same volume. We can vary up um, the material. This is an unknown material, and we can change the volume. And as the volume decreases, in this case, the density goes up. We can decrease the mass keeping the volume constant and the density goes down. You'll notice that this uh, tank of water is set at uh, a volume of 100 liters. And the question is, will this item float? Well, one thing that you should know about uh, water is its density is set pretty much at one 
um, kilogram per liter. And so based on what we know about density, um, objects will float on more dense things. In other words, less dense things float uh, on um, more dense things, and they will assemble themselves naturally in this sort of density gradient. So we should be able to predict that a 1.36 kilogram per liter density, which is what this block is set at, is greater than 1, so we should predict that it should sink. So we'll try that. And indeed it does. The cool thing about this uh, simulator is that you can vary these um, volume, volume and mass uh, measurements, these, these settings, and we can adjust the density of the block so that it will rise in, in, uh, in our sink. So negative buoyancy is sinking, positive buoyancy refers to floating, and the neutral buoyancy is sort of somewhere in between. So in this case, we're looking at a negatively buoyant object. So if we increase the volume, notice how at this point, the density is just greater than one, so it's not going to float. If we go to just less than one, then you'll start to see it rise very, very, very slowly. So 0.99 is less than 1.0, so smaller number on the, uh, on the density measurement will, will, will float on the larger density. So this is really kind of a cool way to, to vary things up. If we were to reset this, uh, we can see that we have, um, in this case, wood. Um, but if we wanted to look at, well, how does mass affect, affect things? So here we have various objects, and they all have the same mass. And do they indeed respond differently? That one sinks. That's negatively buoyant. This one sinks. What do you think this was going to do? I think it's going to float. It has a larger volume for the same mass. So it has a smaller density. I'm going to guess this one's maybe neutrally buoyant. So it only sinks halfway. So this is positively buoyant, negatively buoyant, or excuse me, neutrally buoyant, excuse me. And these are negatively buoyant. We can reset it and we can look at other factors, same volume. So they have different masses uh, by a factor of two times the red block, three times the red block, and four times the red block. Or we can look at density, and we can determine based on their density, um, what will they do. Uh, density layering is a natural phenomenon. Um, if you were to mix uh, substances with different densities, uh, they will settle out, as we see in this picture. There's a natural arrangement according to this uh, uh, series of density. Uh, the most dense would be the blue solution at the bottom, and the least dense would be the clear solution at the top. In nature, there's different effects of this density layering. Uh, in this picture, you can see the ocean is divided into generally two regions. There's warm water, which is the light blue region on top. Deep cold water is the region below that. Uh, due to temperature and salinity, the warm water is less dense than the deep cold water, and so there it will float on top. Uh, there is this thermocline layer, which is the basically the dividing line between those two bodies of water and it does not allow for any mixing of the two um, masses of water. This has um, huge implications for marine organisms and uh, all the way going down to phytoplankton and um, how nutrients are brought up from the, the bottom of the ocean. From a medical point of view, um, blood can be separated into its various parts using something called a centrifuge, which is basically a, a device that spins at high rate um, test tubes containing various things. And based on that um, high rate of spin, uh, the forces that are applied will separate things according to their density. So uh, heavy things, dense things will go to the bottom, light things will stay near the top. From a hemophiliac point of view, the plasma is really what um, is um, helpful for them. So hemophilia is a disorder, it's a blood clotting disorder, so if you get a cut or a bruise or a nick, most people, non-hemophiliacs, can actually um, stop the wound. There are these clotting factors in their blood that are proteins that help to kind of stop that that um, wound and then it'll turn into a scab. Uh, and so the plasma will help hemophiliacs uh, do that when on their own they can't. Buoyancy is the uh, effect of um, differing densities uh, of objects. Uh, so this iceberg is less dense than the water around it, so we'd say that it's positively buoyant. 
so it floats. Um, if it were to sink, um, then it would be uh, negatively buoyant, and then neutral buoyancy is um, sort of halfway in between, so it's partial sinking, partial uh, floating. We can do a quick uh, survey of different materials um, to determine what their densities are. Um, water has a 1.0 density value, so anything uh, smaller than that is going to float. Anything uh, greater than that is going to sink. And so here we have uh, a density of 0.15, so obviously the styrofoam block should float. Same is true for the wood. And even the ice, which is nearing 1.0, which is kind of that magic line for water, uh, it should still float. Then we can look at a mystery object. And um, the cool thing here is that we can do something called volume displacement. So volume displacement is a way that you would determine the density of an unknown object. And really you need two things. You need something to, to measure mass and you need something to measure the volume. So in this case, if we look at block E, we have a way to measure its mass. So it's registering at 3.53 kilograms. And then we can move this object to the, the tank. And we know that it starts at 100 liters. That's the volume of the water. We drop this in and anything in water is going to displace or push aside the volume of water equal to the volume of its own shape. So we see that now it's at 101 liters, the difference is one liter, so it's the final volume minus the initial volume, so the difference is one. So when we do our density measurement, 3.53 kilograms in a volume of one liter gives us 3.53 kilograms per liter, that's the density value. Remember that the um, vol volume, excuse me, Remember the density value for water is 1, so 3.53 is greater than 1, so it's going to sink. And so we can do the same for any of these other objects to determine what is their density. And then the second step would be to sort of rank or order the densities according to their scale, from lowest on top of that column to the heaviest on the bottom of that column. So a simple way to answer that problem would be by volume displacement. Four steps to your answer. Measure the object's mass, usually in grams or kilograms. Um, have a container like a graduated cylinder or a beaker or even a, a big water tank. Know what the initial volume is. Immerse the object. Figure out what the final volume is, sort of the final water line. Subtract the difference, final minus initial. And that's your volume of the object. It's the amount of water that was displaced by the water by the volume inside. And then divide the object's mass by its calculated volume. So D equals M over V. And there you go. And wrapping up, density is a physical property of matter. It's the relationship of mass to volume. When different densities are um, mixed together, they will arrange themselves in a natural layer, sometimes called a density gradient. And then lastly, buoyancy is the uh, floating of an object and it's the result of two densities that are compared if the density of an object is uh, less than the density of the liquid in which it is uh, floating or immersed then it will float and if the density is greater than that value for the liquid then it will sink. As you wrap up please uh, visit this uh, link answer the quiz questions uh, please record your score and then note any of the questions that uh, maybe you needed help on and we can discuss those when we meet next in class.